good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for tuning in. This is an online webinar for the BA Creative Arts Programme at SOAS. And the reason we're doing this is because this degree is a totally new venture for us um, here at SOAS, and it's a very unusual degree programme, and there really isn't anything else quite like it out there. So um, it occurred to us that lots of people would have questions about how this degree uh, works and the kinds of um, subjects that you can study within it. So we thought we would run this webinar just so you get a sense of what we have to offer and uh, to find out more. So if you do have any questions um, throughout this presentation, uh, you can make a note of it in the chat section of your screen and I'll answer any question at the end, whether it's about SOAS or whether it's about the subjects within the degree program or anything else relating to the creative arts. Um, my name is Richard Williams and I'm a lecturer here at SOAS uh, in the School of Arts. And I'm primarily a, a teacher of ethnomusicology, which is the study of society and culture through music. And in particular, I focus on the music of North India and South Asia, but uh, I've got a, a range of interests and I teach a variety of things here. So not many of you will necessarily have visited uh, SOAS and you may have heard different things about us. So I thought I would start off by ex saying a little about uh, the institution that is SOAS. Um, and after that, I'll talk through what this degree is all about, what we mean by creative arts. And then after that, I'll work my way through some of the things you can expect to find here in the School of Arts, the kinds of skills and uh, methodologies that we bring to the table. And then after that, I will work through the structure of the degree in, in a bit of detail. So you can see really uh, what you can expect if you, if you come and join us here. And I'll talk a little bit about the career prospects of the degree in the creative arts. So lots to get through uh, today. And like I say, feel free to ask any questions at the end and the slides will be available afterwards. Um, so if you miss something, a uh, piece of information, don't worry, you can look at it again some other time. OK, so just to get started, I'm going to say a little bit about uh, SOAS, which uh, stands for the School of Oriental and African Studies. And this is the leading higher education institution in Europe, specializing in the study of Asia, Africa, uh, and the Near and Middle East, but also the diasporas as well. And it's a really unique institution, and I really can't stress that enough. A lot of the time, when you study a subject at university, uh, in most universities, the concentration of your subject, of your discipline, will be on Europe and North America, if you're lucky. And occasionally you'll have a course that talks about Asia or Africa, if you're, if you're lucky. Um, and we flip that round. We like to say, let's take in all of the different aspects of human society and cultures from around the world and foreground what is happening in Asia, Africa, and the Middle East and the diaspora, and think through the complexities and the varieties of culture that are out there, rather than just concentrating on the familiar. Uh, we are located right in the heart of London. Uh, we are uh, next to the British Museum, if you, know, if you know that sort of area. We're right in the heart of London. We're incredibly central. But at the same time, we're very small. And I think this is one of the real benefits here. A lot of students, when they go to uh, a university in London, can feel a bit engulfed or a bit overwhelmed by, by the city. Um, but we have the advantage of being relatively small. And so you get to know everyone on your course. You get to know your lecturers very well. And you have a real sense of a community. It's a very human scale community in the heart of a huge uh, metropolis. So it's that nice balance, I think, between having all the advantages of a city like London, but also not feeling totally overwhelmed at the same time. So altogether, we have about uh, 6,300 
students studying on campus. And we have an incredibly diverse student body. About 50% of our students come from outside of the UK. So it's a hugely international community here. And it really is um, an exceptional place to, to, to live and to study. I say that um, all of these students come from uh, all around the world and uh, there's a huge diversity there. But I think one thing everyone here has in common, whether they've just arrived or whether they've been working here for, for 20 or 30 years, one thing that everyone here has in common is this uh, passionate curiosity for the world at large and for thinking outside of the box and asking questions about what else is out there. I think a lot of uh, the students I teach here, when they were at school, felt a, felt a bit thwarted to an extent and kept thinking there must be more uh, to life than this. And there must be more than just reading things about English history or European uh, ideas. Then there's a lot more out there and where can I find it? And it was that question that brings them to science. Everyone, I think, comes to SARAS for a reason. Now, one of um, the traditional values that we, that we have at SARAS is uh, our language training. And that's part of our heritage. But uh, if you don't like learning a language, do not panic. Uh, it is not compulsory at all. But it is something that we offer on, on all of our degree programs. So we have a huge range of non-European languages. Some of them you will have heard of and others you will not have heard of, definitely. It's an enormous range. So, you know, typical things uh, that students are interested in are Mandarin, Korean, uh, Hindi, Punjabi, uh, Vietnamese, Swahili, Burmese. There's a uh, Hausa. There's a huge range of language options here. But more than just studying grammar, we like to think, you know, how do people in these languages express their ideas and think about uh, culture? We uh, have a hugely uh, rich concentration of specialist staff at this university, which again makes it unique. And we have people who study an enormous range of topics, some of which um, you'll be familiar with and others you may have never heard of before. But here we have scope to, to cover an enormous uh, variety of topics within our programs. So that brings me to this degree, the, the BA Creative Arts. And like I say, this is an incredibly unusual and unique program. There really is not something else like this out there. It's specifically designed for students wishing to develop a critical, theoretically informed approach to the arts and the cultural industries. It's so really it's ideal, I think, for for those students who are interested in film, who are interested in music, who are interested in literature, who are interested in, in painting, who have a variety of different interests and they're finding it quite difficult to pin themselves down to a single discipline. So maybe there are aspects of uh, the English that you're doing at school, English literature that you're doing at school, which interests you, but you think, do I really want to do an entire degree in that? Maybe you are really excited about uh, visual art, but also want to look at it from other perspectives, taking into account uh, film and music. It could be that you love music, but have never studied it formally, that you can't read uh, notes on the page, but you're so interested in musical culture. These are the kinds of students we're looking for, and I think they can really benefit from this program because it is fundamentally interdisciplinary. And we try to bring together critical, really scholarly approaches to thinking about art, to thinking about music, to watching films critically, and then also to ask questions from uh, literature as well. So it is interdisciplinary. It's also cross-cultural. And by that, I mean, we offer expertise in the expressive arts of Asia, Africa, Middle East, and the diasporas. So that means you can cover an enormous scope of things in this degree. You could be looking at African film festivals one week. You could be looking at Korean pop music the next. You could be studying 18th century Japanese painting in this degree. 
there's a huge, very rich range of things that you can do here, which I'll go through in a bit more detail when I discuss the overall structure of this program. At the same time, one of the key elements with this is, apart from giving you the theory, the history of these traditions, expertise in these traditions, we're also very interested in giving you experience and skills that you can take with you after you've graduated to engage with the creative and cultural industries. And so that's thinking through how do we interpret art? How do we consume music? What is the influence of technology and digital media in the way we are engaging with arts from Asia and Africa? So one of the key things about this is this balance between subject knowledge and then a whole range of technical skills that will help you as you move forward after your degree and engage with uh, industries. And there's a whole range of industries that we that we here are, are very interested in. It could be uh, media and journalism, the art world, from museums to art houses and auction houses, uh, to the music industry, film production and, and film curating. So. Again, there's a really interesting scope here um, for a variety of skills. So how does this actually work in practice? Um, how do we bring in that practical, creative orientation to, to our programs? We offer a range of practical skills, which, which, are, which you can ask about more in detail. Skills involving radio or producing podcasts skills in curating and thinking through how you would actually arrange an exhibition, thinking through film festivals, but then also opportunities for getting your hands dirty and also getting involved with creative expressive practices yourself. So we have a very strong tradition here of musical performance, which I'll talk about more, but throughout your different modules and your courses that you cover here, we have a range of ways of processing all of the things that you're learning. So rather than just writing essays the whole time, we'll give you a bit of flexibility. So it could be that rather than writing an essay on some topics, you might do a radio program or you might design um, an event like a festival or an exhibition. We're also thinking about creative writing and different kinds of writing skills. So rather than writing an essay every time, how would you write a review of a concert or a review of a film? So we're really um, being quite imaginative in the uses of writing and the uses of the skills that we're trying to give you. Already with our students um, who are already here, we have a whole um, range of events that they can go to or opportunities that they can enjoy. So for example, our music students um, who are taking modules which are available on the creative arts degree, uh, some of them study sound recording and through our contacts uh, last year, we took some of our students to BBC Broadcasting House in London where they sat in the studios and um, approached how to make a professional standard broadcast. We also organise workshops with visiting musicians, with visiting artists. We're also interested in creating opportunities for our students to find placements in the creative and cultural industries. And we have a never-ending, expanding database of contacts in the creative and cultural sectors. So it's possible to use these contacts to develop opportunities for internships and for other very hands-on experiences, which will put you in a very good position for when you finish with this degree, uh, equipped with this knowledge, equipped with these skills, and you want to ex um, engage with uh, the industries out there. And again, being placed in London, gives you access to a huge range of opportunities. On site, you know, even before you leave the campus, there's a, there's a huge range of things that we have here. We have an excellent uh, concert venue and we run our own concert series. We have a radio studio and recording studios. Uh, we also have an excellent 
uh, gallery, uh, the Brunei Gallery, which has its own website. So I encourage you to look at that page and to see the kinds of exhibitions that are curated here. All of this is right on our doorstep and you'll be in lectures and seminars uh, right next door to the exhibition space of the Brunei Gallery or down the corridor from the recording studio. So these things are very much on hand and available for use. So here is just a list of some of the things that you could end up doing on a practical level when you're taking this degree, curating exhibitions, composing music, doing fieldwork in London, ethnography in London. We also have uh, pockets of money to help people do fieldwork on specific research projects abroad. Um, the opportunity to create a film festival, design a radio program. We have courses that talk about the music business and think through how digital platforms and new media are shaping the way musical artists uh, put their work out there. So all of these things are possible within this program, which sounds quite ambitious. So how does it actually work? So now I'm just going to run through the structure of this degree, which is um, just to give you a sense of what you could look forward to. So this is year one and year one is about giving you specific skills and then also giving you a taste of different subjects. Not many people will have studied film, for example, at school. And so this is a way of you to get a taste of the different possibilities that you could pursue further in your degree. So you begin with a course we call Great Works, which gives you an overview of the different kinds of art object out there, be it a novel, be it a painting, be it um, an album. Uh, we couple that with a course called Writing Across the Arts, which again gives you uh, skills to think through how do you write about something like music, or how do you critically interpret a piece of art, or how do you write a film review? So these are already giving you the building blocks to, to build on throughout the rest of the degree. Uh, studying popular music uh, is a course which is really looking at popular culture and the history of engaging critically with what society is doing. And um, so that will give you skills through, throughout everything else that, that you look at. Uh, introduction to film, the language of film, the history of film, the theory of film, and then you have a range of options. So you can do an option in uh, the history of art and archaeology, you could go down a theoretical route, or you could get some experience in a particular region. So if you want to do the art of East Asia, then you can take an introductory course on that, or the arts of Africa, and so on. You also take a music option module and these are not uh, designed necessarily for people who are brilliant performers and have been playing the cello since they were five. This is really not that kind of uh, course so do not be intimidated by the music options. There's a one course on global pop which thinks about why particular forms of music like Korean pop are becoming so dominant and powerful and influential around the world. There's a course on sounds and cultures, which again introduces you to thinking through uh, how to study a culture or a society through its music. And then also the opportunity to do performance. And we don't do performance like other places. Uh, we have a, a Southeast Asian uh, gamelan ensemble. If you've never heard gamelan before, uh, look it up on YouTube and have a listen. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we just do things quite differently when it comes to, to musical performance here. So on top of that, you also have a, a 30 credits and those 30 credits can be used for an option module taken from anywhere across SARAS. So if you see something in a different department and you think, actually, yes, I, I've always wondered what um, uh, literature from Southeast Asia uh, looks like, or, or I really want to know about philosophy in Africa, then you can take that kind of option 
or you could do another option from within the School of Art. So you could do another course um, out of these uh, option lists that are here on display. Um, so you, you could do another uh, art and archaeology course, for example, or there is room for a language. And so that, that would be a good option as well. So you could take Arabic here, you could take Mandarin if you wanted to. Um, and really, this flexibility is, is very exciting. So the skills, the themes of engaging critically with art run throughout the degree, but you have the elbow room to really pursue what interests you. And that continues into year two, which is on display here. So again, we have a couple of core courses that you do. One is critical readings in arts and cultures. And again, that gives you the, the critical frameworks and the tools to really interpret what you are looking at or listening to. We also have a fantastic course called Curating Global Arts, which is a, it's already up and running at SOAS, and it's a very popular module, which again, thinks through the challenges of how to present objects and how to curate them and how to interpret them for the general public. And then we have a range of option courses for you, which go across our different interests. So again, you could pursue museums and museology. That would be um, very complementary. You could study ethnomusicology. You could do something practical and very hands-on, like introduction to sound recording. Or you could study the novel and its others, which again, in a very SOAS way, says, let's take a step back from this idea of the novel as being something English or French or German. What does the novel look like in China? What does the novel look like when it's being written by a post-colonial author in post-colonial Sri Lanka? These are the kinds of questions that we're asking because at the end of the day, this is where literature is moving as we become increasingly globalized and more open-minded about the art that we are engaging with. On top of this, you also have a range of uh, regional options. The options are incredibly varied. Um, I really encourage you to have a look at our website uh, for the School of Arts. And if you look on there and you look in our different uh, sub departments for music, for history of art, you'll see the range that we have here. So, you know, I've put a few of our current options up on the screen, like framing Pakistan, Japanese cinema, painting in Africa, pop and politics in East Asia, the world of Cuban music. Again, this is a really exciting and unique selection of things that you can do here. And again, we give you more scope so you can pursue open options, or you can keep cultivating that language that you started in year one. Um, so again, the opportunities here are quite uh, diverse. You know, you could use this degree to start really pushing yourself in one particular direction. You could decide that you want to do regional options around the Middle East, for example, and start picking up the art of the Middle East, the film, uh, of the Middle East, novels from the Middle East. You could do that work, or you could cast a wide net and get a very broad range, a very broad education that covers a whole set of different things. And then finally, uh, because this is a three-year degree, um, you have uh, this lineup of choices before you. So the throughout your third year, you'll be doing an independent study project in the creative arts and you will be assigned a tutor for that who will talk you through it and normally this would be a 10,000 word uh, final project where you can really focus in on a particular piece of research, a particular question that is driving you. Um, but we also give you the option of putting in a practical element there. So if you don't want to just write an essay, but you also want to design a podcast or design an exhibition, a film festival, if you want to develop a musical composition or build a website, that is an option. And again, that will be a really nice thing to have on your CV when you go into the sector looking for work in the creative and cultural industry. So there is room to be quite imaginative with uh, that final project. At the same time, you have a range of taught courses. 
Um, again, there's one which is really about the, the industry side of it. So you can look at arts, culture, and commodification, which thinks through digital technology and how that's changing the arts world. Uh, all directed studies in the creative industries. And that would be where you get a sense of how a particular organization engages with the arts, be it a gallery, be it with uh, a media platform, be it with a magazine. So there's scope there to get a real uh, taste before you graduate of how the creative sector works uh, in action. Uh, and then we go back to our, our key disciplines. So, you know, there's a course to do with literature, there's a course to do with uh, the art world, and then uh, a course to do with music. And you have a range of flexibility there as well. And then again, you have a chance to do one of the option choices that excites you, or again, to develop your language skills. So this is, um, a flexible format, really. It gives you a lot of choice and it gives you the ability to cover as many interests as you want, really, but all the time uh, acquiring very specific uh, skills and expertise. And I think this is really important when you're thinking about working in the creative and cultural industries in a global world. So who are the kinds of students we're looking for? Who do we think uh, will be excited about something like this. Uh, our students at SOASH have, uh, are incredibly diverse. They come from an enormous range of backgrounds and a lot of people come here and very much find a home here that they haven't found elsewhere. They find people who have just as uh, exciting and innovative a range of interests as they do. There are lots of people here who felt you know, like they were the odd one out at school for being interested in film in Africa. Here, you are never strange in your interest. That people here are in, have a huge uh, variety of backgrounds that have led them uh, to coming to SOAS. And we really encourage anyone with a passion for the arts, for the uh, expressive and uh, creative arts to, to come and join us, or for people who all for people who are interested in the creative industries and who want to develop really hands-on skills. You don't have to go into the creative industries, of course. You know, uh, this would this degree would give you a really rich sense of history, theory, uh, cultural studies that would prepare you for doing further research, further studies if you wanted to. But if you did want to go into the creative industries, you would um, be in a very unusual position having those practical skills, those very transferable skills, but also expertise and nuanced understanding of cultures from all around the world, which nowhere else can really give you that depth and that breadth. Um, looking at career options, like I say, this degree combines nuances of the global arts with the applied skills. There's a vast range of career options that come out of this, and we're constantly checking in with our students from our other programs to see where they've ended up and what they have been able to do with the training that we've given them here. There's throughout the degree, like I say, there's scope for making contacts while you're studying um, with contacts which you could then pick up at the end of your degree and explore further. So possible avenues, editorial and journalism, auction houses, uh, musical journalism, freelance media, working in a gallery or in a museum, uh, working in the uh, realm of NGOs and uh, developing cultural sectors, uh, publishing careers in music and so on. Uh, one of our uh, students in music who finished up recently, you know, she did her uh, final independent study project and she, as part of that, uh, recorded an EP, um, an extended play, so a sort of mini album, and she had that as part of her final project. And so um, we marked that along with her essay, and that uh, EP is now up on Spotify, and uh, she's uh, gaining a, a following on social media, and she's very much pursuing a career in music. So there's a a, a very exciting set of um, future options out there for, for people who, who take these courses. 
Um, so uh, that's the end of the formal section of this presentation. So uh, just to remind you, my name is uh, Richard Williams. Uh, that's my email address up there. Um, if you uh, forget, then you know, have a look on our website, uh, the School of Arts webpage in uh, the SOAS main website. Uh, feel free to get in touch. Feel free to drop me an email at any time. Uh, thank you very much for for um, tuning in, and um, I hope I hope this has been useful. Um, I'm also joined by uh, one of my colleagues, Maria from History of Art, who looks after the curating side of things. So, if there's a question which I can't answer, then I can turn to her as well. So, uh, feel free to drop a message or a question at any time. Okay, so I'm going to sign off now. And like I say, my email address is up there. We're going to make all of these slides available. Have a look at our website, see the kinds of things we teach, and hope to hear from you sometime soon. And uh, best of luck for searching out for the right degree for you. Okay, thanks very much. Bye.